Huge weekend in Athens, probably the biggest game of the weekend, uh, certainly the biggest game in Sanford in some time. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about that game and more. Dean Leggy, Matt DeBerry, Ryan Curley on our weekly picks. Matt, Texas is a 13.5 point favorite at Arkansas. They kick off noon on uh, ABC. I'm going to take the horns. I think they're playing well. I think Arkansas, I did, there's not much left to play for there. I do think Arkansas can score a little bit at home. Maybe they keep it close, but give me a late Texas cover, Ryan. Uh, I'll, I'll take the horns on the road. Not Don't feel great about it, but I'll take the, the horns. I'm with you. I feel pretty good about it, though. Uh, I think Texas is, look, backup quarterback last week. But they went in, or they went into that game, and they thumped Florida, and they took care of business. Arkansas is a solid team. I, it's it being at noon doesn't help the Razorbacks as much. I'll take Texas. I think two touchdowns is feasible. Yeah, I'll take the Hogs. I think that this is one of the games that Texas is probably going to look around and be like, "This is getting kind of old and tired." I think Texas wins the game, but I think that. Uh, this is an old rivalry between these two. This used to be Arkansas's biggest game of the year. It was Texas's probably third or fourth biggest behind Oklahoma and, and Texas A&M. So I will, I will grab I'll grab the Hogs and the points. Um, I like I like Texas's chances to win the game. Clemson goes to Pittsburgh for another traditional rivalry in the ACC. The Taters are a a ten point favorite up at Pitt. I think. Clemson can still get into the ACC championship, Ryan, but I'm not sure if I can do the math to explain why. Yeah, uh, I've kind of gone back and forth on this one. I'm going to take Pitt just because you're getting 10 points at home. Look, the ACC is bad. I don't really want to watch either of these teams play football, if I'm just being being frank with you. But neither of them are playing that well. Pittsburgh's coming off its first loss. Clemson is just kind of – they were on this trajectory, and then they kind of started going back down here, and it's somewhere around there. I'll go with the Panthers with 10 points at home. Do we have a weather report on this game, Dean? You know, it's... I will look it up. Uh, Is that uh, the deciding factor for you, Matt? The it weather? could be. Yeah, I've had some real, real bad weeks. Uh, so I'm just thinking off the top of my head here. I'm leaning Clemson, but I'm not sure if that kid from Texas is uh, can handle – the weather out there. I think it's going to be perfectly fine. It's, we're we're, we're like, looking at 55, no precip- no precipitation. So yeah, Kate yeah. Klubnick's never played in that before. 55. Yeah. Put your boots on, kid. Go on up there. Get the job done. Let's get a cover. Uh, but I, I think Clemson feels like there's still something to play for. They're a team that I, I think they can get it done. Pitt looked awful against SMU. That really stuck with me. I know it's at home. They might still be a little beat up and feeling bad for themselves. Give me Clemson to go up there and cover Dean. Yeah, I'll take the Taters as well. Um, I think that they are – this is the last, you know, real challenging game before they play South Carolina at home. I know they're already sweating that one. So my suspicion is they handle this one and and, uh, get the job done. The Swamp will be the site of one of the great SEC bitter, (laughs) bitter games – I mean, these two teams really don't like each other. LSU's a four and a half point favorite coming off a total beating uh, in Death Valley the other night, Ryan. Uh, LSU is a four and a half point favorite on the road at Florida. Yeah, they're both coming off of beatings. That's true. And DJ Lagway is day to day. I'm taking LSU because they have something to play for. And, and Florida, I mean. Pro- it's not that they have nothing to play what for. Are they, are they, they playing for Brian LSU Kelly? LSU could still make the playoff. I don't LSU think they, they can. Still, there is a narrow they, path. They yes. can still they can still get a first round bye. It, it's it's possible. I, it's not happening. But I'll take LSU. I have a hard time seeing them play that poorly two weeks in a row. Um, this Florida team's not. They're they're okay. They're not great. Uh, I don't like it being in the swamp, but I, I am going to take LSU. I've taken them a lot this year. Mm. Yeah, I think Nussmeyer might drown in the swamp. I think he's good for like five or six picks. This guy's been playing awful sometimes. Every time I was turning around watching the game, dude's throwing an interception, hitting a defender right in the chest. I don't know. I'm going to take the Gators at home. Real ugly game, and I might be dumb here, but I I, I don't know. That kid is losing confidence week by week. Um, Low-scoring game. I'm going to take the Gators to maybe possibly – 
win uh, a tight one, Dean. Give me Florida. No, nah, you're not dumb. You, you're 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 smelling what I'm smelling. Um, <laughs> hey, look, I think Florida can win this game. We'll see. Um, I, LSU is a, a disheveled mess right now. Get get them off my television screen. And Nussmeyer is a great example of what happens when you don't have good offensive line play around you. And he's tossing the ball up all over the place. The Missouri Tigers are going to South Carolina. Uh, Williams, Williams Bryce, probably the team playing the best for who they're playing, Carolina. Uh, they are a 12-point favorite at, uh, at Williams Bryce. I'm going to take Carolina and have no lose no sleep over it, Matt DeBerry. I got Carolina to win it. Missouri, uh, Eli, Eli Drinkwitz is talking about the playoff, um, which is cute. Yeah, uh, I think South Carolina might eat them up. Yeah. Uh, they, they're at home, right? A tough place to play. I know they are going to be geared up. For that what time is that? Four fifteen. It's gonna be rowdy. It's gonna be rowdy. Give me the Gamecocks. They just feel a little different. It doesn't feel like this Gamecock team is gonna fall on their face again this year like that. The defense is hungry. Give me South Carolina, Ryan. Yeah, I'm with you guys. I've got them. I feel confident about it as well. Mm-hmm. I, Brady Cook still out. So they're not sure about that. I guess they've been vague about it this week. Um, even if he is in there, I think I'm going to take South Carolina. They, they're a good team, man. And they, I mean, we're talking about like a handful of plays away from them being ranked next to Tennessee right now. So I've got them. Trying to. You're really trying to trigger me with these rankings. Uh, BYU is at home, and the number six team in the country is a three-point favorite over lowly Kansas, Ryan, uh, showing you just what the college football playoff committee knows what they're doing. Uh, Kansas, three-point dog at BYU. At night, Yeah, we'll say this. The lines for BYU throughout the season have been just completely bogus, Um, and this one is too. I will confidently take the Cougars to cover by three points. Yep. Yeah, uh, give me BYU too. Seen a good amount of them this year. They really can play well at times. I think they'll take care of business, Dean. Yeah, I'll take them as well. I, I, this this line being that low, uh, whew. Ohio State is a twenty and a half, twenty nine and a half point favorite at Wrigley Field, playing the Northwestern Wildcats. This game is on the Big Ten Network at twelve. Ohio State's traditional kickoff time. Uh, they can't seem to escape it. Um, I am not an idiot. I will take Ohio State to cover this line. Ohio State, nor, this is more about Northwestern. And the, the, the dregs of the Big Ten are straight up horrific. Uh, give me Ohio State to cover, Ryan. I'm with you. I'm with you. I think that they're, they're just so much better. They've got all the talent on offense. And they've been... They've been close to, if not covering, these big lines against bad teams. I think that theme sticks. Really want to pick Northwestern in the Ridley game. I want to. Be a man. Just do it. Yeah. I can't you, do it. Get- you've been. You're a Wrigley Field expert. You've been to Wrigley Field. Uh, for. We That's what qualifies being an expert. It does. I mean, he could be on the college you, football playoff committee. I need you to remind me that I was there. I do have pictures, um, but it's a little, little no fuzzy. Recollection. No, I, I think Ohio State will be geared up for it. Really fun game, but I think that they're gonna they're gonna run right through them up and down the field. So I'm gonna take Ohio State. Uh, Utah, after having a game stolen from them in Big 12 play, goes to Colorado. This game is early, too. I think it's a 10 o'clock, lo- uh, 10 o'clock for Utah, uh, 11 o'clock local for, for Colorado. I could be wrong about 10 o'clock for Colorado, but it is an early game for both teams. Uh, Utah, Ryan, is an 11.5 point dog at Colorado. Yeah, going with the Buffaloes. I'm on. I'm on the Dion train. I'm not really on the Dion train, but I am for this game. Uh, they've got way, way like significantly more explosion on offense, and, and all these matchups this week. That's the biggest difference. Um, Utah. That was that was the game last week, right? And they missed it. Doesn't really matter for the Big Twelve standing at this at this point. I don't think. I mean, Utah is just not a very good team, but. I, a little bit weird that Colorado is going to have to play that early in the day, but That's I will a, take the Buffaloes. Just to be clear, Ryan, it is a ten o'clock local kickoff for both. Both teams are playing at ten o'clock in the morning. Let's get eat your eggs, eat your sausage, and get out there, man. I mean, I like it. 
Go right. ahead, Matt. I think uh, t- that loss really, really stung. I'm not sure they're going to be able to get out there and, and play really good football. Uh, Travis Hunter Heisman campaign still, you know, out there. I, it wouldn't surprise me if Colorado tried to really run up the score if they can. So I'm going to take the Buffaloes uh, for a big win, Dean. I, I am as well. I would like there to be some weather, which I'm going to check on right now. Um, I'm not so certain that that's going to be the case. But, um, yeah, Colorado is playing well, uh, generally speaking. They're not playing anybody, which is also true. Those both, both can be true at the same time. No precipitation, but we're in the 50s, lower 50s uh, for this game. Uh, I, I got the buffs. Look, there's a lot on the line for BYU and Colorado these last couple of weeks. Um, and Colorado, you know, Utah is going to be one of the games that they play. Um, that's going to be one of the more physical games. Colorado, excuse me, BYU simply does. It, I, I'm sorry, I keep saying this wrong. Utah simply does not. They don't have quarterback play like they did, and um, you know that's that's going to be a real challenge for them. Um, Utah winning this game, I, I don't see it. Colorado closes on the road at Kansas, and then they host Oklahoma State. They I just don't see those guys losing a game if they don't lose this Utah game. Tennessee goes to Athens as a 10-point dog, Matt. The challenge on this one is we're not sure what's going on with Nico, the quarterback at, 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 at uh, Tennessee. It's he's been, It's been reported he's in concussion, concussion protocol. Um, I don't know if he'll play or not. This is this, but this is where we're at. Whether he plays or not, they're they're a 10-point dog. Yeah, I think George is going to win the game. I'm going to take Tennessee to cover. Uh, I don't think the quarterback issue is going to be much of an issue at all because I don't think they're going to move the ball on Georgia anyway. I think it's going to be a real low-scoring game. I think Georgia's offense could have some real problems. Again, rushing the ball, it's something – there's no reason why I think they should be able to run the ball on them. And they've got some pass rushers too. So Georgia's offensive line coming off their worst game, in my opinion, of the season – they're going to have their hands full again. So wouldn't surprise me if we had a very low scoring game, especially in the first half with the two teams feeling each other out. So even if Tennessee doesn't move the ball much, I think they'll still think we're going to have to see a tight game, Ryan, towards the end. I think Georgia wins by, you know, maybe four, maybe seven or eight, but I'm going to take Tennessee to cover. I don't know, man. I don't, maybe, maybe I'm just dumb and naive, but this is all kind of t- – pointing towards a Georgia cover to me. The, not sure if Nico's going to play. The disrespect from the committee this week. They're coming off a bad loss. Georgia's backed into a corner. Usually when Georgia's backed into a corner, works out pretty well for the dogs. It's home at night. If the fans are paying attention, it's going to be an elite environment. I, I'm, I'm going to – is dumbly a word? Maybe it's dumb that I'm asking about that. I'm going to dumbly take – Georgia to cover. <laughs> You're going to stupidly take the dogs. Stupidly take it. Yeah, yeah. That's why I said dumbly because it's not real. So Las Vegas sees this as somewhere between Georgia winning at 29 to 29 to 19 uh, or 29 and a half to 19, something like that. I'm going to take Tennessee as well. I've just had enough of Georgia's uh, uh, inadequacies on offense. I do think it's going to be very challenging for Tennessee to win the game. Uh, Nico, no Nico. Uh, whatever it is, um, you know, the crowd is going to have to impress me. I've had enough of uh, the that that group. Uh, it's not been good enough, and, and I'll say the same thing whether they win or lose when they play Tech as well. The over-under, Matt, is at 48.5, as I said a second ago, uh, something like 29-19. to 19. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Georgia played well, but um, the Tennessee defense is pretty good. They're, they're good against the run. Now, some people have run on them, Matt. But Georgia just has not running on anybody right now. Georgia has got to get past this game with a W and get healthy. They are not where they need to be on the health front. They've got to get past this game and get healthy. That's that's the biggest thing. But they got to win it first. Yeah. If you don't match the physicality of the other team, I don't care where you're playing. All right? it, it's better that you're playing at home, um, but it doesn't really matter. You're getting shoved backwards and you can't – you can't do anything about it, right? So Georgia's offensive line has got to step up. The receivers have to catch the ball. And it's just not – we've seen the same thing week after week after week. So it's hard to imagine them, you know, playing a lot better. But I do think they're going to win the game. I think they're better overall. 
Um, but I'm expecting a really tight ball game and, you know, some sloppy play, some turnovers here and there, just because I, I think both defenses are really good. So that's more of my thinking on this, but I think George is going to win the game. Ryan? On me? Yeah. I mean, I, I think George is going to win too. I've thought that, I think, I, I'm sure I said it at some point, that if they were going to, that this, this stretch of two games between Ole Miss and Tennessee, it felt like the Ole Miss game was the one they were more likely to lose. I have a hard time seeing this team lose twice in a row. Ten, we we both thought we did the video on the way home from from Oxford that we thought ten was was too big. I still kind of think it is, and that's why I feel I'm I'm not confident that they're going to cover that line. But I do think Georgia wins the game. I think it's just going to be a little too much for Tennessee on the road. Who by the way, if you look throughout their entire season, it hasn't been as great as, no. as maybe people think. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. And 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 I say ten. It's now jumped up a little bit more to ten and a half. So we'll just see. I mean, I I I think I think this is a a moment though for Georgia. I mean, it's really critical. Uh, you know, you're you're you know, you're giving Kirby Smart the keys to the kingdom. Um, there's no thing that he's asked for that he's not gotten that I'm aware of. And um you have you know, the largest, I mean, there's just really kind of no explanation or excuses. They've played a very difficult schedule, no doubt. But um, this is must win for them, and I, I completely expect them to win. And if they don't, there should be ramifications, uh, in, you know, at Georgia. Now, what that will mean, I don't know. But you can't miss a 12-game playoff. That's just not acceptable. And I, I, I don't – I'll close with saying this. I don't – think there's a zero percent chance that two lost Georgia is left out. I think I think it's possible they still could get left out, which is not right, but I think it is possible they could still get lost out, even with a loss to Tennessee, because some of the stuff uh, You mean even with a win? Sense. Go ahead, Ryan. You mean even with a win over Tennessee? Even with a win over Tennessee okay. and they close out the season going ten and two, I think there's so much stupidity out there like uh SMU and Miami both getting in or Colorado and Utah both getting in. You know, uh, and they would, the the rash, rationale would be, yeah, you beat Texas, but you didn't beat Alabama and Ole Miss, and Alabama and Ole Miss are right there with you, lumped you together. We're going to kick Tennessee out. And I, like, it just – I wouldn't trust this playoff committee at all. At all. So Yeah. I do think that, you know, three losses makes the tougher decisions a little easier to make, though, if you're Kirby Smart, because you've got to make some changes one way or another, and you've got to bring in more talent, and you've got to adjust some things. The talent has got to be upgraded. For sure. Two losses is unacceptable. Three losses, changes definitely have to be made in some fashion. I'm not the one making those decisions, thankfully, but Kirby Smart's got to get this thing back on track because on track is winning and competing for national championships. And you, if you lose three games, Ryan, you're absolutely not doing that. No, it's it's completely under underperforming what not just the expectations, but what we know that the team is capable of doing with the talent it has. And it, it's it's a similar enough team to last season to where this is this is a complete underperformance so far. I, I mean, you're saying the two just, losses is. Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong. It, it was naive to think that they would go undefeated. And one loss kind of seemed like like it was inevitable with the road schedule. But. Two losses and looking as bad as they have in a lot of the other games, it's it's been an underperformance so far. Yeah, I don't think it's the losses. I think it's the way they've looked. I mean, I think – Yeah, I, I mean, it's the combination of the two I think I think 10 and 2 and you get in the playoff and you can take it from there. I mean, there are scenarios here, y'all, where they get 10 and 2 and they get set up with a really good spot. But, um, you know, or you go 10 and 2 and you get into a bad position. I mean, all of this is about who you play in the first round. Uh, and who you get matched up in the quarterfinals if you win. I mean, if you get if you get opposite the ACC or Big Twelve school, that's really all you can really ask for in the quarterfinals. I mean, to be honest, I mean nobody should be itching to play Oregon or te Texas or Georgia or Alabama or whoever wins the LSU, whoever wins the SEC, because that team will have been playing pretty hot at that point. Anyway, all right, we, yeah, real quick, real quick, I will say this, and then, and then we'll go. Um, but I do feel like. Um, as I try to remember my thought, oh, yeah, it, it seems like Georgia is a team that probably could have used some style points earlier in the season. And I remember when they barely squeaked by Lexington, we were all talking about, well, Georgia does this once a year. They did mm -hmm. against Missouri. They did against Auburn. 
you know, they'll turn around. Well, they haven't really turned around. They, mm-hmm. you know, had some ugly wins against Auburn, Kentucky, Florida, Mississippi well, State. The Auburn win wasn't first really ugly, the Matt. They, they really smashed Auburn. They, they if did, we're picking they, ugly, there's more to choose from than the Auburn game. Yeah, well, looking back, I think they probably should have beaten by worse. Auburn completely stinks. They're yeah. worse than I think they were then. But could have used some style points early. But, again, this team's not what they have been, and they showed it to us against Kentucky and ever since they're not they're not but no one else has a 31 point win over AC uh, over Clemson and no one else has a 15 point win over Texas on the road so this team is a bit of a enigma um wrapped in a riddle and in in to some degree they just gotta they just gotta play better on the offensive line very specifically all right we'll see you after the game make sure you're watching riding home on dog post after these games or you're missing out on all the info you need to see thanks for watching